Hey, I'm JP Miller. We'll do a resume review. We'll talk about jobs and job searches. Let's get into it. JP Morgan says limited downside for crypto markets. I don't know if you're into this kind of thing, but we'll just take a quick look. This will be 20 seconds. JP Morgan sees limited downside for crypto markets in the near term. And Elon Musk, SpaceX, they recently sold off a bunch of Bitcoin. And JP Morgan is saying, this looks like the end of that sell-off. As a result, we see limited downside for crypto markets over the near term. We reversed the post Securities and Exchange Commission versus Ripple court decision and be partly credited to the broader correction in risk assets such as equities and in particular tech, which in turn appears to have been induced by frothy positioning in tech. Higher U.S. real yields, which is going to push down stocks, and growth concerns about China. So, I think that we're near the end of the frothiness in Bitcoin. We'll see. Career guidance. What fields of work are there which utilize the work experience I have thus far? This is interesting. This person is a PhD in physics. They've been doing research at universities. They want something new. Okay, have a PhD in physics, in equilibrium systems, and information theory, and machine learning. They want to know about fields. Their suspicion is that software development is going to be flooded by the East, South Asia, and algorithms. Reports that we see say that the need for developers continues to grow. There's two mindsets you can have about this, and one is accurate and one is not. One, the first mindset is to say that demand for software engineers will be filled and we will reach a point of equilibrium at some point, even if today that demand is like 30 million developers or some crazy large number, which it, it is according to reports that I've read. Or, and, and it'll be filled and then it'll be a harder market to enter. And, and it is a hard market to enter right now, but we're in a bad economy. Right? In the good economy, it won't be as difficult. Or, as there are more developers, there will be a, a need for more developers. Right? So that as you need developers, as you get developers, you're going to create new solutions or have ideas for new innovations that will require the work of more developers. How AI throws into that is also interesting. That becomes an exponential factor. So AI allows one person to do the work of, say, seven people, because one person can do the work of three people if they're really motivated to right now. Without proper support and compensation, you get burned out, but one can do this. Okay, with AI, you can do the work of seven people. So do we now need a seventh less of that 30 million? Do we, do we now only need four to five million? developers or is there so much more innovation because you can create so much faster you can ideate so much faster that you can use the same number of developers and create all sorts of amazing products and discover new things i think it largely depends on the person and are you are you exploring what you can do with software are you pushing the boundaries are you getting out of your comfort zone or are you just filling jira tickets that are more or less comfortable to you so interesting interesting thought experiment i'd like to know where you land if you follow through on the thought experiment let me know okay so for this guy they want want to know what kind of experiences they have so one thing to do, I'm, I'm not a PhD in physics, that would be really cool. So you can go to LinkedIn, if you don't know what to do, do PhD physics. And first you'll see jobs. So these are different jobs that qualify you as a PhD in physics. So, applied research consultant, so if you've been a researcher, you could do a consultancy. Simulation analysis lead, and another consultant. So consulting might be a new feature. You can also look at people and then see, the, so these people are going to be PhD physicists. This person's in quantum. So a little bubble pop up for me. Theoretical high energy physics, probably a researcher. Data scientist, 
software engineer. So Wan Chu is a software engineer, data scientist, data scientist, computational chemist, data scientist, educator, accessibility advocate, data scientist, senior data scientist, statistics a candidate in applied physics, film school, senior data scientist, data scientist, semiconductors, quantum, Python, SQL, machine learning, Sahar Ihas. Sounds like similar to, to our Reddit poster. And I would say like try to connect with Sahar and say hello to this OP, not to the whole world. But Sahar, live in peace. All right, that's my two cents. It's one way you can look at options, search around LinkedIn and, and explore. You can even talk to ChatGPT. Put this into ChatGPT and see the unbiased answers that it gives you. Okay, recent grad, appreciate feedback. All right, let's take a look at this resume for John Doe. The education section could probably be clean up. So double major, double major, highly ambitious John Doe. Congratulations. Maybe maybe given your double majors, this is the best route for for that education at entry. That's fine. Okay, been working since 2015. Worked through college with double majors. Very very impressed. Took a two year break. It looks like to finish up State University. Congratulations. That's really awesome. Experience. Let's see. Management intern. So this this top level entry could be on a single line. So you can put your comp and I like to put the role first and then the company and then the location and then the date. So if you do that single line, that'll save some room. Try to keep it to four bullets, which looks like has been done. Management intern. Guessing you want to be in like management or doing something with international business. You need quantities in your bullets, so you have no quantities right now. Think about how many customers did you serve? How large was the inventory that you managed? How large were your sales or increase in sales volume? What were the defining moments in your career? What were the defining moments in, at each job? And quantify those moments and tell me about those. Don't tell me about the boring day-to-day -day stuff that's boring. Everyone knows what the boring day-to-day -day stuff is at least for the common, like more commonly understood jobs. You know, maybe a data particle physicist, we may not know what the day-to-day -day is, but a hiring manager may know, <laughs> especially if it's in that field, then they'll definitely know. All these are like basic, this is early, early jobs for, for young people, or entry level at least. And again, you could add some quantities and yeah, limiting these to three bullet points is best. And then activities, yeah, active at college, bilingual, Arabic, English. Man, my thought is you should join the Navy. You should join the Navy or the Air Force. Your bilingualness and economics and international studies will give you quite the start, I think. I'm a pacifist, but uh, if you're asking for advice, that's what I would think. But overall, the resume, the format's really highly organized it's a nice resume to look at the text might be a tad small as long as it's a font point size of 10 it's okay you could add your linkedin up here at the top but yeah i mean i don't know what kind of roles you're looking for but you're just starting your career you just graduated just graduated in august this month congratulations no 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 it was in may they just bought the internet consider the navy or the air force but you're asking about the resume that's, that's my thoughts. Okay, here's an interesting one. People getting the shaft by their coworkers. I don't know if we'll read the whole thing, but my work colleague uses GPT and gives me all the real work. What should I do? I don't know, use GPT and throw it back at them? A few months ago, I joined my first company. I previously worked in research, aeronautics, and defense. I started my new job with enthusiasm, most humbly. I work remotely most of the time and they don't interact with the manager, mostly with the coworkers. At the beginning, tasks were few and simple, dream job. However, a month ago, I was given tasks related to a defense and security project in which I had to provide support. My colleague asked me to help in this project, and I guess he had asked my manager, I think, well, talk to your manager, my man. Initially, it was support to help him to finish some tasks on time. 
Over a month later, he has ended up giving me all the tasks on his side, or I think they are all, which supposedly are already prototyped and only remains to test the code and check that it works in all cases. I can bear this as I am able to cope with the work without overtime. What has really annoyed me is that I've realized that most of the codes I've received are exact copies of ChatGPT output. That's hilarious. I use GPT to start documenting myself on a topic and to get inspiration, but never I take complete code as GPT usually doesn't give correct results. However, what my coworker has done is to take the codes out of GPT and give them to me to check if they work. How can you write a code without checking if it even has runtime errors? This colleague directly takes GPT codes and gives them to me to test and to change anything I see that does not work. Codes have no references, no papers, or books, or reports, nothing. Nothing unscientific and innovative to me. And to make it worse, the codes do not even work and gives wrong results. How did I realize this? Because I have asked GPT to give me the code for each specific task and it outputs the same code, comments, variable names included. I find this practice even more damaging to our work as we work in the defense and security <laughs> If you have imposter syndrome, let this end now. We are we are capital F. <laughs> we are capital F. <laughs> We're not gonna make it. Oh man, ten years from now all code in the government is gonna be written by GPT <laughs> and, and not even like smart AI that's ready to run the world in a judicious manner. <laughs> it's going to be this early stage stuff. What should you do? I want to make this situation known as I don't think it's a good practice for a company. Since I work remotely, I'm new. Since I work remotely, I'm new. I don't have so much trust with my colleagues and my manager. I don't want to make enemies. My colleague has been there for more than two years. I also don't want to make this colleague feel humiliated. This is a pickle, isn't it? Get the shaft work. The man is tired. Coding. He's offloaded it to GPT and his human friend to fix the bad GPT code. Uh, you, my friend, need to read The Dravaeus Principle. That's what you need to read. You need to read this. You need to read The Dravaeus Principle from Rabbit Farm. Not going to get into it. person needs to read The Dravaeus Principle. And things will start to make sense. What do you do? Talk to your manager about it. Hardly know the manager. How's the manager going to react to that? The manager going to just say, hey, do what your coworker requests? Okay. So, philosophical. Get philosophical. How should you approach this? You can approach it as a learning opportunity. You're going to learn a lot. Do this for a little while. And you're going to learn a lot about debugging. And it's going to make you a better programmer. If you want to be a better programmer, then this is this is a way. It's not necessarily the way, but this is a way. Fix someone else's bad code, refactor it all. Uh, if you know this coworker has just given you GPT output, maybe you just refactor it completely. You may only end up using 10% of the original code. As far as the, the humanity, and the, that is the pickle, right? The workplace politics, and that is why you need to read the Gervais principle. Because there's all sorts of landmines around here. You're going to have to be really circumspect in your approach. And you can document everything in GitHub. So I make sure you're using the commits and showing that you're the one doing the work so that when the coworker takes credit for it, quietly just show your repositories and your, your daily commits. And you can show the blame, which proves who made the changes and, and what's been done. Good luck. People asking you for apologies. People are on the internet. Uh, this is interesting. I have no idea what Mendex developer is. I, I, I saw this before the cast and I could have looked it up, but it says something about being a multi-million dollar stack. 
sounds like some private enterprise stuff. I didn't bother to look it up because I'll never code in Mendix. I just want to talk to you about this lesson here. You're a learning program you want to learn. And so you think like, oh, get into this. I used to think, oh, Julia, that sounds cool. It's up and coming programming language. It promises revolutionize the way that we code. Where's Julia today? That was almost, that was 10 years ago. Where is it today? It's not, a, it's like no one talks about Julia. Is it used in any real applications? No idea. So don't go for like Mendix, whatever that is, a multi-million dollar enterprise software. I, I don't know. Some stack that's only for specific companies or a specific company. Learn what you have to learn to get the job or just keep the job. But when you're learning a program, you should pick whatever is most popular because that is going to be around the longest. You take a theme. How long has it been around? You want to know how long a theme is, will be around. The general rule of thumb, as far as anyone is concerned, is to say, how long has the theme been going on? Multiply it by two, and that's how long it will last. So, for example, React has been around since, what was it, 2015, 2016? That's seven years at this point. Oh, it'll be around for another seven years. That's not bad. Flutter and Dart, how long has that been around? I don't know, two or three years? I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't know when it was founded. But maybe it'll be around another two or three years. Google has stopped supporting it. It's on its way out. Same with like Angular. Who talks about Angular anymore? Where is it? All right. So one, Google doesn't seem to support the products. Don't trust Google. All they've supported really is Gmail. I wouldn't learn any Google products. Facebook seems to still be supporting their stuff though. React has continued to improve. This person is like they've just learned Mendix and now they're asking about maybe I should learn Dart and Flutter. This is, no, learn your lesson. Firebase, AWS, sure. Those those have been around. You want to be a cloud engineer? Go for it. AWS. Stop learning the the peripheral stuff. It's JavaScript, Python, C, C plus plus, React, AWS on the cloud front. Those are the core languages. Those are the most popular languages. In the case of C, C plus plus, it's been around forever. I know Rust threatens to take it over. You want to learn Rust, that's cool, but learn C++ first. Build a portfolio in C++ and then go ahead and teach yourself Rust. And probably you'd have an easier time of it because it's based on C++, right? So learn the main stuff. Protect yourself, especially in these economic downturn times. Job with housing. Was this, um, excuse me, am I bothering you? By Boots? Boots Riley, I think? If you haven't seen that movie, it's awesome. It's... Amazing. Excuse me, am I bothering you? By Boots Riley. And in this movie, he talks about. No, he doesn't talk about nothing. It's a movie. There are. It's called WeWork, the company. And it's basically like a farm factory. It's not a farm, though. It's like a factory factory. That's dorm, dormitory factory. People live on site, they live in little bunkers. They're basically subsistence workers, and WeWork takes care of their basic needs, so food and shelter needs, and they just work their shifts, and they live they live where they work, and that could absolutely be a future. And that's terrifying. Just let the corporation take care of you. It's also that concept is also in Ready Player One. It's not like Ready Player One sci-fi. Excuse me, am I bothering you? Is, is uh, it's not sci-fi. It's more of a thriller, drama, comedy. Hard to place. It's hard to categorize. Got to see it if you haven't. I know that's what this this reminded me. Does anyone know of companies like Bullseye Jobs or CoolWorks? They're a staffing agency that has jobs and housing. I've worked for both, just looking for new opportunities. I would search for Bullseye Jobs, CoolWorks competitors. Right. Look for their competitors, if that's what you want to do. And maybe GPT can even help, like SBAI. What up with Binance and MasterCard? I don't know. 
MasterCard decided to terminate its four-year partnership with Binance. Interesting. Well, do you know what's going on with Binance right now? The whole thing, it was unraveling. How's it looking today? I asked this dumb little question. BNB. Oh, they came back. Oh, oh they survived. Well, good for them. That was really scary. Look at that. What did they get down to? 205. That was scary. Okay. Well, maybe they're out of the woods. How do you, as an introvert, learn to cope at a job with no formal onboarding process? <laughs> yeah. This is really common. This is really common. So I got a job at an insurance brokerage firm with a minimal interview process, which anyone would be grateful for. And I've been there over a little week now. Problem is, there's no onboarding process. And the majority of the time, I find myself idle with no work. I was brought on as an underwriting assistant for the underwriting lead. This is where things get tricky. On day one, the GM tells me that the goal is to replace the current underwriter because they have been having issues. <laughs> he's been threatening to quit. Apparently, he's stubborn. I haven't seen that from him, but everyone tells me that. And that uh, he's not willing to share information or tasks. Hence, I've been mostly idle and bored. I spend my time learning about products. Kind of an introvert, so I'm unsure of the appropriate amount of shadowing I should do. As management told me, that he thinks I'm taking his job. Which you are. Also, the people at the firm are also loud, so I have become the quiet one. You should also read the Gervais Principle. Also had a meeting with the director, and I kind of fumbled a bit. Uh, and was kind of nervous, and now he thinks I'm all over the place. Any advice on how I should be more? Like, yeah, be more assertive. You it sounds like you need to pick up some ass assertion in your life. Go s take up kickboxing. Do something completely unrelated that requires enormous amounts of physical activity and exertion, and allow that to seep into other aspects of your life. So take up kickboxing. That's that would actually be my advice, rather than trying to address any of this kind of this is all mess. I need to prove my worth and learn how to interact and seem upbeat, even when my energy levels are low. Yeah, but I need to tell you, a lot of us do that, and it's exhausting. You're going to burn yourself out if you don't have some kind of a store and it's not coming from an authentic place. You're going to burn yourself out. You're going to crash and burn. It's going to hurt. It's going to be really painful. And you just have zero assertion in your life right now, it sounds like. And you really need to assert yourself. Take up kickboxing. And read the Gervais Principle. Start to build a relationship with your coworker. Talk to them. Yeah, they think you're taking their job. You are taking their job. You've been told you're taking their job. So they think correctly. People are not idiots. People understand what's what. They understand what's up. They understand tension and they feel the energy of other people. And if you've been in a relationship, anyone out here, and you say to your significant other, hey, what's up? What's wrong? And they say, what do they say? They say, nothing. And you already know. Like it's in the tone of the voice. Nothing's up. Something's up. And then, then it's on you to decide if you want to push it or do you want to separate the gap a little more. And you just keep separating the gap, keep separating the gap until you moved out and you never even talk to them anymore. Right? Or you drive the conflict. The conflict either leads to a chasm or it leads to a correction and it leads to connection. Conflict is the route to truth. So you need to talk to your coworker. You need to say, hey, what can I do? What's up? Show me the job. Otherwise, you need to start like becoming a process expert. This is the third route. I'm a process expert. Yes, you've been there a week. So you haven't been trained. So it makes sense that you don't know anything. Also, it sounds like you're relatively young and inexperienced in the workplace so was, they say it was their first job even if it's not it sounds like it's early job early career so start developing a process document what you do what whatever the few things are that you do document that document what you do build a book of documentation you can put this in software if it has, is available to you a word doc would be the most basic form in files that are organized in directories that document your work and the processes and the steps. And that way, 
when it's time for you to train someone, you'll have all the documents in place. It'll all be written. Con Conflux is really great for this as like a software. If your insurance agency uses it, they probably don't. So use whatever tools they have. Good luck out there. This is an interesting one. I want to look at this. Navita warns semiconductor curves will end U.S. chipmakers' ability to compete in China. Right, a few months ago, there was this big fight about the semiconductors. We're going to bring them back to America. Navita issued a fresh warning that further U.S. export curves on its chips to China would risk a permanent loss for American semiconductor firms to lead in one of the world's largest markets. Several reports earlier this year suggested Washington was considering new export restrictions on artificial intelligence related chips. Despite the geopolitical overhang, Navita stock has rallied and the company is expecting revenue growth to nearly triple in September. We believe the current regulation is achieving the intended results given the strength of demand for our products worldwide. We do not anticipate that additional export restrictions on our data center GPUs, if adopted, would have an immediate material impact to our financial results. Well, I'll tell you. America is run by the corporations, so the Biden administration will more than likely heed this advice. Now, if, if Bernie was president, anything goes, who knows, <laughs> but he's not. Biden is Biden's going to toe the corporate line. It's probably not news, honestly. If Navita says Biden administration will probably fall in line, they don't, they don't want to hurt the biggest runner in this down economy right now. All right, what is the best and easiest entry level work that can be done by anyone? Do arts and crafts and do trade shows, build things and tour them around, live in an RV, have a quiet, simple life, sell your wares on the weekend, sip tea and ice coolers with old ladies, gossip about their children, live a simple life. Stay away from restaurants. Consider being a barista. I'll work, not ease. Work at an office. Work at a small insurance agency. Work at an insurance agency. It sounds like you'll have lots of time on your hands. Explain how this hypothetical PC build would run PC VR titles. We all like to dream, don't we? You have the money to back up your dream? It'd be fun. Okay, here's a fun one. What are your thoughts on long-term employment impact on software developers? Lately, I've been thinking about something that I'm sure many of us in tech would have on our minds, the idea of a long-term economic slowdown and how it might impact our careers. I'm a full-stack developer who is also in company leadership. I've started to notice a few things that are giving me pause, like a slowdown in the job market and even some effects on appraisals and project opportunities in many companies. Right now, I'm doing pretty well where I am. But I can't help but wonder what things might look like for developers for a year, few years down the road. It's a bit of a worry, especially considering how quickly things change in tech. You know, things, things change gradually and then all at once. I'd really love to hear from you all about this. Are any of you feeling the same way? And hey, many of the seasoned folks here have gone through something similar in the past, maybe 07, 09. It'd be super cool to hear about your experiences and any advice you might have for making career careers recession resistant yeah it would be cool i agree 2007 09 i was uh teaching i was teaching at a school school closed down and then i went to work with my dad driving trucks doing truck deliveries how long do you think the recession is going to be it's coming like kind of in it doesn't <clears throat> apparently according to gpt gdp it's not but by every other metric GDP isn't everything. It was never meant to be an indicator. of Social security numbers are never meant to be your identification. This world is all ad hoc. That's why once you realize this world is all ad hoc, you um, get rid of that imposter syndrome. Because everyone's, even the experts, just throwing stuff to the walls and seeing what sticks. And taking the easiest road possible. The road less challenged. How long is the recession going to last? A year? Maybe? Maybe two years? Do you think it will last longer than two years? I don't. But I'm an idiot. What do I know? Really. Pay down your debts. If you're fortunate to have work still, pay down your debts. Get all of your debts paid off. Cut out all of your expenses that you can. Look at 
your subscriptions, cut every last one that you possibly can live without. Pay off all your credit cards, pay down your debt, get your variable interest rates, the fixed interest rate, it could get worse, work hard to be debt free. Start to think creatively. What can you do to be a creative? How can you be creatively minded? What can you do? Find an intersection. Find an interesting intersection. The next few years are going to be bumpy. And then after that, we're going to have a long season of prosperity. This is going to get amazingly good for a lot of people. It's going to be unlike anything in your dreams. It's going to be great. But for the next couple of years, it's going to be going to be terrible. It's going to be really bad. So prepare yourself now. Buy big bags of rice and boxes of ramen noodles. A couple of gallons of water. Change it out every six months for water. Get a few tubs of peanut butter. Some cashews. And prepare yourself for the next year or two. That's what you should do. Sell your house and find a new place that you can pay for cash outright so you don't have a mortgage. Protect yourself. That's what you can do. I've already talked to you about this idea about more developers eating up all the work or more developers creating more work. I'm in the camp that thinks that, I tend to think that even with AI, the more developers we have, the more innovations we have. But I also think that we're going to see a three-person company create a billion-dollar product or a billion-dollar company in the near future, like in the next five to 10 years. And maybe those ideas don't jive with each other. I think there's, but there could, there's like, there's not a cap on the number of three-person businesses that can create the billion-dollar markets, right? Like wealth creates wealth. What doesn't help is when wealth is hoarded. So when you have trillionaires hoarding wealth, we don't have one yet, but I just saw a prediction that Jeff Bezos will be one by 2036. Most of that wealth is in his company, right? Not necessarily that he's hoarding it, but they have ungodly amounts of money and could stop working today and spend lavishly and Musk and you know, Zuckerberg and these, these um, modern day robber barons, they'd be fine. But the hoarding, the hoarding of wealth hurts. We need we need some kind of a wealth redistribution. However, that is it doesn't have to be centralized. It doesn't have to be top down. But we need some kind of a wealth distribution, where like you have three people who own fifty percent of all the assets in in this country in America. That's like it feels deeply immoral, like deeply wrong. The way things are, I don't know. Proto principles and all that, and even look at like the Bible and the parable of the token, the man with the five tokens and three tokens and one token. The man with the five tokens put it to business and doubled it. The man with the three tokens put it to business and doubled it, put it to industry. The man with the one token was so afraid he buried it under a tree. And then the master came back. Man with the five tokens, said, look what I did, 10 tokens, good job. Man with the three tokens, said, look what I did, made six tokens, nice for you, job. Man with the one token, said, sir, I was so afraid of the scarcity mindset, I was so afraid. I know how great and terrible you are. I buried it under the tree, here it is, he's furious. You could have put it to the bank so I could get usury. Then here now, dirty, all dust. Go to the dog and give his token to the man who has it all. Right? The men who have it all get it all. I don't know. Things are gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be rough for a couple of years, so prepare yourself for that. But be creative, keep pushing. Don't like don't use that as a thing to give up. It's not not like to say give up. Don't give up. Push yourself to be better, to be your best version of yourself. There's greatness in you. Find that greatness and, and let it shine, whatever it is. If you don't code, that's fine. You don't have to code. Maybe you design. Maybe you think. Maybe you build processes. Maybe you're a product person. Maybe maybe you're an artist. Whatever, whatever it is, you have something of value inside of you 
Look for those intersections of your interest. There's something interesting in an intersection. Things happen. There's action there. Sometimes there's crashes and wrecks. And, and we kind of like that too, voyeuristically. It's like there's energy there. So what are the intersections of your interests and what can you create? Hard. Yes, it's hard. Life is hard. It's hard to do the easy route too. But you do the hard thing, it creates an easy path that's contradictory. It's backwards, but you got to do the hard thing. Do the hard thing. Find your interest. Push yourself. This, this video is awesome. Look at that thing. No Man's Sky. I need to wire up my internet so I can play this on, on Twitch. I got the VR headset. I'm just <laughs> my internet's not wired and it's janky. And then like you know how many pretty faces there are in the world. Don't give money just to a pretty face because it's a pretty face. It's not even that's probably a dude. That could be me. I could have posted that. You know, the internet's a crazy place. Redditor for three weeks. Get Get the heck out of here. I like this. Looking for a good app to learn during night shift. Hey guys, I work night shift at a gym, and I have like two to three hours of actual work per night, and the rest is spent reading and standing around. I also could easily use a phone without being noticed, so if anyone knows a good Android apps for learning programming, let me know. That's great. Hey, my friends at the EZA, they made an app. You should check them out. They, they teach Web3 development. This guy does Python. New Eagle. This is great. I love this. I love this mindset. Yeah, use that time. Use that downtime at work to upskill yourself, to make your life better. Uh, so apps that are great, like Code Code Academy has an app. Khan Academy has an app. They're great. I love Khan Academy. Class Central is really great. Class Central has an app, and I love Class Central. Shout out to my friend, Dewal. Say hi to Dewal. Class Central. They have this huge database of all sorts of free classes. In fact, while I'm on it, if you want, you like, if you're liking this and, you know, you've subscribed and all that, like, I have a Discord, small Discord right now, Learners Builder Society. We're just here to supporting each other in our learning and our building growth journeys. We want to do things in this world. We want to learn. And we want to turn that education into things. And if that resonates with you, I'd love for you to join us. I'll put the link in the comments in the description. And you should join us and join the Discord. It'd be great to have you there. This person knows Python. Check those out. Class Central, Khan Academy, Code Academy. Udacity has an app as well. And uh, Udacity is known for their nano degrees, but they offer free courses. And while you're learning, you should do everything free. You shouldn't pay for anything. You should just do it free. The only reason you pay is if you have to pay to actually motivate yourself to do the work. I like that person. Good job. Let's do a resume review, and then we're going to wrap this up. They're lurking sub. They, so they've been lurking in the sub, and they've been re preparing for recruitment cycle and consulting for 2024 full-time opportunities as a senior graduated next year. I would not want to be graduating in 2024 in May. Go back to college and get a master's degree. That would be my advice. If you're about to graduate in 24, don't <laughs> stretch it out to fifth year. Get a double major or even better, go to grad school. I'd love to have you guys review my resume. It's a PNG. You gave us a PNG? Bro, PDF or go home, okay? I don't want to be a jerk. But PDF or go home. PNG. And do not send a PNG to recruiters. Don't send a JPEG to recruiters. PDF version. Well, don't send a docs version either. PDF or go home. Okay. So you don't need to label your email because everyone knows what an email looks like. Same with the phone. You got your LinkedIn. Great. And you code, right? So where's your GitHub? University. Got a congratulations on your scholarship. Congrats on your GPA. Worked at a consulting firm. Very nice. You've got some quantities in here. Good. The bullets are all two lines. Can you work on that and get those bullets as tight as possible? Facilitated co-creation, visioning, workshops with the client. 
leadership team to drive, collaborate, decision making, and align on strategic. I hate resume language. I'm just like, no, it's good. It's it's fine. I'm not I'm not dissing John Doe here, but like I I hate how we talk and it's such business gobbledygook. It's such BS. No one talks like this. Well, what do you do for a living? Oh, I I free leadership technologies to drive collaborative decision making to align multi silo teams. What do you do for a living? I analyze data in house job portals to establish internal salary benchmark. I'm being facetious. Like this is actually it's good. You've done a fine job. I just I hate how we talk in resumes. Just so banal. These games we set up for ourselves and we play. Congratulations on your honors. Be a little spicy today. You'll have to forgive me. Be a little spicy. All right. It's fine. It's fine. And it's it's even good. I you know, make your name larger. And these like the headings are actually smaller text than the body text it looks like. Like your name should be the largest font on the page because you're the star of your resume. And the body should be twelve to fourteen points and the heading should be like fourteen or sixteen points. Okay. You're going to have a fine career. Good luck sincerely with your graduation in 2024. I hope it's great. I hope you get a job immediately. And consider getting a master's degree. Ignore it. The employer, 22 year old girl from a friend request from a 43 year old boss. Ignore that. Don't answer it. Is the job too demanding or am I not good enough? A lot of people feel this way. Look, you're good enough. You're good enough. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna read this one. We're gonna wrap it up. I just wanna tell you that you're good enough. Keep pushing. You're great. There's greatness in you. You're good enough. You have value. And if your work treats you like crumb, don't give them don't give them your, your pearls. Don't throw your pearls before the swine. A lot of jobs out there are swine. Don't give them your pearls. Find another place that will respect you and sponsor you. I've been J.P. Miller. Have a wonderful night.